you don't always know if the Lord wants to use you at all times, but I'm going to watch the Spirit very carefully. And uh, I, I so love God's people and the church. I really do have a love affair with the church and with the people of God. And I, I, in so much that I, I want our worship to be on such a level that it will be as a stair step building higher and higher and higher. And that you will so enjoy, and those that come will so enjoy the Word, the Spirit, and watching God work through the Holy Ghost in a spirit filled church that worships God in spirit and in truth. Jesus. And that it won't be a dull, boring experience for you. That you won't be turned off by it, even if you're very young or you're a teenager or you're in your adolescent years, that you will, or if you're aged and you're having difficulty remembering, and, but yet the, the service will be, or if you're in between that, you're a younger person busy with the affairs of life and pressed with that. And all of that's here in our church. All those conditions are here. But that you'll get something from being together with the people of God that will be educational to your spirit, to your soul, educational to you changing, educational to you mastering you, the person you, mastering you. Um, and then there'll be a joy. It won't be a terrible ordeal that you have to go through life and face it and say, is there any relief for my pain? Is there any hope for my uh, days when I, I don't know the answer, I can't find a way, I don't know what uh, is going on, I, I'm not sure where I'm going, what I'm doing, and there are days like that in everyone's life. No matter how wise you are, how uh, who you are, there are days like that. And uh, so the scriptures have always been my my refuge. It's been my house of refuge from the storm of life. From the storm of myself. From me. Me, the person. Uh, that uh, I, I can't describe you like I can describe me. And you can't describe me like you can describe you. Because you know yourself. You know the thoughts no one else might. But God, but God, he does. And then here in Mark, uh, it seemed like tonight I wanted to, I wanted to accumulate faith in this service. I wanted to build up my spirit so that I could lift you up, so that I could this strong uh, group of men, this person I was witnessing to today, that's coming back. They said tomorrow night. He said, what are those men over there on your platform? We don't see that in every church we go. What do they do? What do they represent in the church? Because we, most churches, only the minister sits usually up on the platform with a couple of the chosen elders. Uh, this is unorthodox. This is different. That all these men would be sitting here. And... People are curious about who, who we are. Why are we like we are? Why are those sisters up there like that? Uh, usually in a church, most of the order of the Pentecostal churches and Protestant as well, they all come off the platform because the ministers out in the world we call the church world, they don't want any distraction back to them. When they're trying to deliver a message, they, they want uh, the eyes of the congregation on them, not on what's going on around them or back them. So they, they have that form. But we don't do that. We don't do that. We have a different order. We have a different worship. Um, we, we, we go at it in a different way. But we have a reason and a purpose, a biblical reason, 
for everything we do or we shouldn't be doing. We don't have a Bible reason, a biblical reason, a scriptural reason for every bit of the order of the church. We shouldn't practice it because it's false worship. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, that's why I can't worship with the church world because it's false worship. I have to worship God as the Bible said in spirit and in truth. I have to find the pathway of charity. Yes, sir. I have to walk a different way. I have to let the church of Brayton be ordered a different way than the church world does because they don't have the truth revealed to them that we have. And then they have truth that is revealed. There is truth among all of God's people. We're not critical. We're just showing that there's a people that has to go to a higher level. Uh, they have to rise up higher in the scriptures. In the book of Mark, um, Jesus accentuated this, and uh, I may not stay up long, brethren, so you better get some thoughts together around in my And um, we don't want the service to drop. We don't want the service to rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Everybody came Amen. so the service can rise. Amen. If you then be risen, Amen. Colossians, third chapter, verse 1. But if you then be risen yes. with Christ, seek those. seek those things that are above, where Christ sitteth in the right hand of God. And... Um, you're dead. That is, you're different. You're dead. Dead man is different. That's right. He's dead. And I'm dead tonight to the world. Yes. I'm different. The world cannot inoculate me. The world cannot influence me. Jesus. The world cannot persuade me. Because I am dead. Yes. Paul said in the book of uh, Romans, but reckon yourself. Therefore dead. Uh, I'm dead. Uh, there's some things I just won't have any feelings. I turn it off. I turn my mind off. I turn my spirit off. And if your mind turns off, you don't have any feelings. You, you may love candy, but if your mind tells you that you don't love it, it isn't good for you, you won't reach for it. Mind controls it. But we, we want to rise up in Christ, rise up and, and Jesus said in uh, Mark, uh, the fourth chapter, and he said in the 26th verse, so is the kingdom of God. As if a man should cast seed into the ground. I'm going to have you read with me a little bit, all right? Read, read verse 26 with me. Ready, congregation? And he said, so is the kingdom of God. As if a man should cast seed into the ground. All right? Verse 27. And should sleep and rise night and day. And the seed should spring up and grow up. He knows not how. Verse 28. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade. Then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. Verse 29. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. What was Jesus talking about? What did he say? I know we read it, but what did he say? What was he talking about when he said in verse 26, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man, here's the man, should cast seed into the ground, into the ground. The kingdom of God is like a man casting seed into the ground. The kingdom of God is like a man casting seed into the ground. 
And when he does that, there's going to be a reaction of the earth yes, to the seed. Yes. Not the seed to the earth, but the earth to the seed. Yes. Because the seed goes in the ground. Therefore, the earth reacts to the seed. Yes. When a child is born or conceived in the womb of the mother, yes. it is the mother, the mother that reacts to the seed. Am I right? That's right. <laughs> the mother must react to that seed. The seed is in vain. All the seed can come forth. But if the mother doesn't react, come on. if she cannot conceive, then the seed is in vain. Are you getting the picture? The word of God, Jesus said, is as seed cast into the soil, into the ground, into the earth. You're the earth. You're the earth. I'm the earth. I'm sowing seed right now. I'm sowing seed right now. I'm sowing seed right now. Now, is the earth going to react to the seed? Because if the earth does not react to the seed, the seed just lies there. There's no conception. And if there's no conception, there will be no birth. There will be no deliverance. If, if, if the seed, if, so we, we should watch ourselves in worship. We can spend two hours in worship and it becomes vain worship to where we do not get what the seed is trying to do. The mother can have the physical activity of relationship. The man can. And yet there be no conception. There be no life. Because it's all together up to that mother once the seed is cast forth. And it's good seed. And Jesus was not talking about bad seed yet. Did you know he never, he never sows bad seed. No, sir. No, sir. He never sows bad seed. In the 13th chapter of Matthew, the wayside soil is the cause. It, it, there, there was no fruit came forth from that. The, uh, the hard earth, there was no fruit came from that. The stony ground. See, the earth determines the seed. Absolutely. The seed is not going to produce unless the earth is right. Unless it's receptive. And the church can sit for two hours. Come back again tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Go through another week. Finally, there's a month. And you, the seed's been so, so, so. Look the around, there's no birth. There's no, the, the church ought to be bringing forth right now. If you are a Christian, you should be producing fruit. If you are a Christian, you're either just a Christian in name, and that isn't a Christian. It's only a name. Because it's impossible for, for God to arrange a seed sower and him sow the seed and it not bring forth unless the soil isn't right, unless the heart isn't right, unless the ground isn't right. See, so I'm very careful right now. In fact, I'm watching myself up here because I don't want this service to be one of those ordinary services of worship. I want to worship God in spirit and in truth. You know? I want this congregation to be electrified. When this message is through, whether it's five minutes, ten minutes, I want you to be electrified. I want you to be so full of joy and peace because you can feel life. I'm not a mother. I could never be a mother. And my wife could tell me, and I believe she has in our lifetime, she knew Paula was in her body before I knew Paula was in her body. Did you? You knew Paula was there. I didn't know because I just sowed the seed. The church knows 
when there's life from the seed yes. in the church. Yes. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord because you can feel it all over. There's a moving. They tell me that there's a moving in a woman's body. That she knows before the Father may ever know. One day she says, I want to tell you something. He doesn't tell her. He never tells her. He doesn't know. He just sowed the seed. He was just used as a seed. See? But the woman says, I want to tell you something. There's life in me. I'm expecting it. The father says, oh, the child is to be born. And the family. Well, Jesus said the kingdom of God is like a man should take seeds and cast it. From here to the coming of Christ, I want the ministry to become seed source. I want the handmaidens that are called of God to sow seed. I want our worship, our service. I want it because it's biblical. I don't want to waste another time we come together. Let's come together for a seed sowing and for a conception. Yes. You let Christ be conceived in you. When you go home tonight, it should be that the seed is so conceiving that already the mother, the church, feels like. Yes. And they start telling yes. the seed sowers, yes. there's life in the church. Amen. There's life in the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Yes. I hope you're getting this picture. Amen. See, I can sow the seed, but I cannot determine it being conceived. I can sow it. I'm sowing it now. But I cannot determine if your soil is going to let it conceive and bring forth a life and a birth of Christ in you, the hope of glory. But it, but it can happen because you don't have to be wayside soul. You do not have to be wayside soul. No. I say tonight, praise God. Amen. Oh, I, I want to shout about that. That's, that's, I don't have to be wayside soul. No. That's it. Where the fowls of the air come, come and on. pick up the come seed. On, praise the name of the Lord. Seed is given from the Father to bring forth life. Did you know in the Old Testament, God cursed a man that would be so careless he would spill his seed on the ground? Yes, sir. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Did you know a man of God should not be careless with a seed? Yes, sir. If it's not going in the womb of the church, he better not be playing with it Amen. and cast on the ground. Yes, sir. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 So that's a type. That's a picture. God cursed that man because his seed was put on the ground. The seed is not to be put on the ground. It's to be put in the womb of the woman, the church, the kingdom of God. Yes. And this, this, this seed tonight is so precious. I feel it while I'm speaking. Yes. Because if the seed goes in your soil and you become a mother of the seed, you know what you're going to do? And I'm going to do? We're going to bring forth fruit. And it will clean our lives up. It will order our lives. It will sanctify us. It will take us out of the blues. It will get us out of depression. It will move us out of the ordinary realm. It will change us. We will have a, a smile on our face. We will shine as the brightness of the sun because we have life in us. No woman is happy. In, in Israel, a barren womb was a curse. Yes, it was. A barren womb was a curse. A barren church is a curse. There needs to be life in the woman because the seed is good seed. Praise the name of the Lord. Finally, Jesus said, the stony ground the thorns that grew up, the wayside soil, but some seed oh, fell into good ground. Good ground. Yeah. 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 
Feel the presence of the Lord here tonight. Praise our God. Praise our God. Some see fell in the good ground. Yes. And it was impregnating that ground. And it was a concession. And it brought forth 30, 60, twins. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hundred triplets. Yes. My God, did you know your womb of your soul can bring forth multiple, multiple results of the seed of God to where finally it's a hundredfold? Yes. Amen. 